Here's part one of our conversation with the great Jimmy Rankin. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. Jimmy Rankin is well known as being a member of the Rankin family band, was the younger member of the band, but ended up being the main songwriter and, of course, a vocalist for that group. But it's his solo career that really made a difference in my life. Song Dog, that debut album that came out. Oh, I remember my wife saying, you play this album every single day. There was Handmade, Edge of Day, just fantastic albums. His Christmas LP, and I hope he records more, is a classic. And his most streamed song is actually from that album. It's part one of our conversation with the great Jimmy Rankin. When, uh, when I heard, I remember being on the radio and playing Fairly Thee Well Love for the first time, and um, I cried. I heard that song, and I, I'm this tough Easterner who was a lumberjack all his life. And there's like 30 songs that have made me cry in my life. Joni's Blue did it. Uh, but I, I'm on the air in spite of myself, and I'm, you know, it's the early evening, and there's the news guy's still there, and he's going to do a newscast, and I'm playing Fairly Thee Well, and I'm, and I and I went, oh my god! And I thought it was a traditional song. I remember going, yeah. it has that kind of feel to it. And I immediately found out you wrote it, and that's what hooked me. At that point, I'm going, who is this guy? Like, where do you come up with a song like that? Which I'm asking you right now. Well, you know, I grew up around traditional melodies. That was probably the first music I heard was uh, Cape Breton uh, fiddle music because uh, my parents. In particular, my dad was a huge fan of fiddle music, and uh, my brother John Morris started playing that music when he was eight, and it was just around the house all the time. There were fiddlers in and out of the house because my dad loved it, and he played a little fiddle. My next-door neighbor was John Allen Cameron's uh, uncle, who was Dan R. MacDonald, and he lived literally across the road. You could reach out and touch his place. And he was a prolific, like, genius composer of, of uh, Celtic uh, fiddle tunes. Mm -hmm. And, if you know, if you Google him, you'll, there's a, a documentary done in 1970, which he's heavily featured in. And uh, next door to us was Don Langus Beaton, who was another legendary uh, fiddler. And, like, the, there were just a lot of those guys around at the time. It was probably synonymous to, you know, all the old great blues players in the south we had tons of these guys around uh cape breton at that time and they're all gone now and uh but uh so i grew up with that music so i those melodies are very familiar to me and uh i never took up the fiddle you know i was uh, uh, john morris was always the guy who had perfect pitch and he played celtic piano and fiddle and he was always the guy so i thought i needed to do something else so i took up art and went to art college, but uh, got interested in music. But when I started writing music and we started making records, the Rankins, um, we were just basically putting the kind of music that we played in those dance halls on a record. And there was, you know, you'd put some traditional music on and then we used to play some country music or some old time rock and roll or whatever. And uh, I started getting flack from because we started playing a lot of folk festivals, you know, in, in the States and in Canada. And they would always pass over my, uh, my, we had a record out, the first Rankin record, and I had written some contemporary kind of stuff. And, and you know, the folkies would pass me over and say, oh, you know, the, the second rate, blah, blah, blah. And the real deal is the Celtic. So for the second record I did, we did, I wrote Fare Thee Well, Love, which is, uh, you know, thinking about traditional music and it, that those melodies, and I can create those melodies very easily because I'm just so familiar with the, that kind of music. So that's where that came was and it, from, and it was, uh, you know, it's it's based on a traditional theme. Of course, it's there's personal, uh, there's a personal story behind it. But uh, I never had, I knew it was a good song, but I never had any idea that it was a radio song until we uh, made uh, that uh, record. And we needed a song for Cookie and myself. It was the last song to make the record. And uh, quickly turned it into a duet and uh, uh, recorded it. Basically, Cookie and I singing around a mic. And I remember making that, doing that record. And Chad Urschik out of Toronto would uh, produce those first two records. 
and uh, I remember them saying, you know, this this will never make radio. It's the core. It's just four and a half minutes long. The chorus is a minute into the song or something, and and so we never had any expectations until EMI picked us up, and they started. Uh, you know, they had the infrastructure to get songs on the radio. Because believe me, we tried locally to get stuff on the radio, and the only radio that would have anything to do with, with CBC and college radio at the time and, and it was successful on that but when commercial radio picked it up and uh, we were making our third record at the time and Fairly Well Love just went right up the charts and eventually got to number one on on pop radio AC radio and, and stayed there for th- two or three weeks at number one which was and I was like oh we were making our third record, and I was like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know, you know. So anyway, that's where that came from. But I, that song, I, you know, to me, it was like, kind of like, it was like, like the blues, you know, the, the blues music is a celebration of hard times, and, and those Celtic ballads, you know, if you listen to them, they're, they, they bring you out of that, even though they're sad, and, um, it never made me sad to sing it, you know, it was just like I'm just writing this song, but I realized the impact of it when, you know, we were doing these festivals and, you know, these people would be up in front of the stage and, and, uh, and then, you know, you'd see them crying and stuff and probably thinking about someone that they had lost or a relative or a sibling or a husband or, you know, so uh, anyway, I... To this day, I get requests for that song uh, for funerals and you know weddings, <laughs> and, uh, everything. It's it's really taken on a life of its own. It's it's gone around the world. It's uh, you know it's been uh, arranged for choral, for orchestra, and you can, if you Google it, you'll see choirs in Asia singing it. And and uh, and and this past fall, I got um, uh, it was inducted into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame. So. Yeah, yeah. And I have the plaque right there, so that's a that's a big one for me. It was it was really really great. And you won a Juno for that one as well, right? Yeah, I did at the time. Yeah, it was uh, got uh, song of the year, uh, I think song or songwriter song or song of the year for Sokin. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah. We'll have more from Jimmy Rankin coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada.